Hey everybody, my name is David Ruff. I operate in the beautiful city of Toronto, Canada. I love it up here, but I only love it in the summer. <laughs> I hate most of the winter. We have four months of good weather, about four months of like, eh, okay weather, and four months of hell where the air is freezing your face off. But we learn a lot of stuff when we're up here. But we also know that we want to be able to get out of the matrix and be able to go somewhere where it's warmer. And rent is going to the moon. So what are we going to do about it? What does it tell us about the economy? And how can you make money off of this? That's the most important part where we're going to be building revenue streams on a daily basis. So let's jump straight into the articles of the day. If we uh, look into it, you guys, our article that we're going to be pulling up today is from blog.to. Blog.to mentions that it now costs $525 more per month to rent a condo or an apartment than one year ago. $525 more a month. There's one number in there that I think you're going to get quite shocked at. It's growing more and more expensive, it says in, in the article. The greater Toronto area averaged monthly rental prices went up 19 0.3% year over year to $2,482 a month. Now, listen, uh, $2,482 per month is the average for all of Toronto. Remember, the greater Toronto area. So you can have the main city and driving half an hour in each direction, and you're still including those lower price homes. So that's deceiving. If you think that you can live downtown Toronto, for $2,400, it's not going to happen. Downtown, way more expensive. But across the entire board, the prices are way, way up. How much does it say again? 19.3%, according to these consulting firms and torontorentals.com. Now, this puts us back above rates of pre-pandemic. Well, no crapola, Sherlock, you think? We printed 50% more money. <laughs> And you think that the rates are going to stay the same? Uh, hell no. I guess they don't understand how the economy works. The average monthly rent across all types was comparatively cheap of $2,080 in July 2021. I don't know anyone who got $2,000. Anyway, downtown's different, right? Meaning that it has increased $400. Um, factor in the out-of-control inflation plaguing most of the world. And the $400 in 2021 is actually worth $430. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Toronto proper, like downtown, it says it now costs an average of $2,667. Okay. 25% up in one year, $525. So what does $2,667 get you? $2,600 is getting you a one bedroom, ladies and gentlemen. One bedroom. It is over $3 a square foot. In most cases, like $350, $375 per square foot to rent per month. You're getting a one bedroom for $2,600, right? And if you want any more, you need to have kids or something. Prices are going to go up even higher than that. Um, now, here comes the uh, really big hit. And 3% increases in a month in May. 3% in June. 3% in July. Holy man, crazy. Okay, now look at this number, guys. Tell me if this doesn't sh shock you. The M5V postal code in Toronto's entertainment district and King West neighborhoods recorded an unbelievable 43% increase to a Manhattan-esque $3,200 per month. I don't know if, if, if that doesn't shock you to your very soul. To, to see a number that big, uh, 43%. This is uh, mind-blowing. I've never seen anything like that, ever. So you should have a 43% increase in rent over 10 years. And it's happened in 12 months. Mind-blowing. And so this is going to hurt a lot of people, right? So if we if we jump back into the article, uh, this is, again, blog.to. You can find it... Um, for real estate Toronto and just search up $525 a month increase. If you do something like that, um, it says that uh, outsized rent creases over the next few months, attributing price growth projections to further interest rate hikes coming. Why would the increase of interest rates 
increase the demand for rentals. Why? Because as the rent increase, the mortgage increases, the rates go up, the more the payments, the more people will foreclose on their homes and the more people will have to go into rentals. I mean, how do you, how do you live? Okay. So you either can buy a house and have a mortgage. You can either rent a place or you can live in a cardboard box. Okay. Those are your three choices. Buy, rent, and live in a box. Choose. And so when everybody can't afford their mortgages, you're in big trouble. Family member has a $500,000 mortgage on a tiny, tiny, tiny little unit. His payments are up over $600 a month. The average house in Toronto is $1.2 million with a mortgage of around $1 million. Their payments are up almost $1,200 a month. Nobody has that money sitting around. So as the months wear on and people's emergency funds are getting depleted down and down and down, they will be forced to maybe let go of their home and move into a rental. More demand coming for the rentals. This is what we used to see in 2019, 18, where we were having 10, 15, 20 applications for a rental. One of our homes we put up for rent, we got 25 applications in one weekend. 25. So this is where the demand for rentals is going to continue to go up. What is the cure for this? The real cure for this is to have landlords in a friendly place to move in. We've seen this play out in many, many different cities, in many different countries, many different jurisdictions. If you hammer all the landlords a lot, nobody wants to invest there. The best thing you could hope for is some short-term pain. You would have to let all landlords raise their rent prices as much as they want and let the market decide. Landlords feel for some reason that it's them that set the price. Well, you could set the price for $25,000 a month. It's not going to rent. It's the public that is voting on how much your rental is worth. So you got to put your price as high as you want. Let the market figure it out. You can raise the rates as much as you want. You can evict if you want. If you do that, trillions of dollars will pour into the markets and build so many units available for other people to rent. And as the demand stays here and supply continues to go up, the prices will come down. Now, it will be short-term pain for long-term gain. And that's what we need. And we need more governments to be able to stand up to that and say short-term pain for long-term gain. That's how we'd get rental prices down. It's not by putting more rules on them. It's getting more supply. I mean, the economic rules, 101, supply and demand. That's it. That's how it works. So we got to get a lot more supply because we're very, very, very short. A million and a half homes in Canada short. In the US, it's like 6 million homes that they're short. We need properties. So we have to encourage people to go take their hard-earned money and get some loans on them. All right. So that's how we would fix it. How can it help you to make some extra money in this kind of market? Depends what kind of home you're in. If you are always looking for the type of property that is really good, good demographics moving into the country or into the city, wherever you're going to buy, we want to make sure there's a lot of young people. It's healthy. A lot of different streams. Never buy in a city like, let's say, Sault Ste. Marie or something that has one metal mill where my mom grew up. And if that place closes down, the whole city shuts down. You need to be in a place that has uh, a good a manufacturing center and maybe some oil and maybe some universities and maybe some government and all kinds of different things. You know, think of it like a, a wagon wheel with all these spokes, you know, you can be resilient depending on wherever the market's going to go. So you want good demographics and so forth. And you need to be buying properties like that. If you already have your money tied up in something else, let's say only in stocks or ETFs or only in a massive property somewhere. You have to think about diversifying yourself and not putting all your eggs in one basket. Don't be in a massive house. Don't be in all these extra toys. Maybe you should sell some of them off and buy some cash flow. It looks like nothing is for sure, but it looks like over the next couple of years, it's going to be really rough. So try not to spend as much and use all of your effort, all of your time, all of your credit buying things that are making you extra money. That's my suggestion to you. You can get through this. Right now, these renters are complaining about $525 more a month. And listen, I am not telling you that $525 a month is nothing. That's great. But most houses, the people that own houses are losing $2,000 a month uh, a day, $3,000 a day for some areas of Toronto, 
are losing $7,000 a day, a day. So $525 a month is a lot, but you are losing a lot less than the guys who have those big homes. So today, renters are winning. That's my day. This is the type of day it's been, you guys. Sound like Lloyd uh, Robertson. Anyway, I hope that you have a great day. Listen, guys, if you know anybody this could help, just send it to one person, please. Just send them that over to them. If you ever have any questions, follow me at roughteamrealty.com. Uh, you can also follow me here. Please remember to subscribe, notify, and let me know what things that you'd like. Do you agree with this or not? And let me know if you don't like something. I'd like to know. A lot of our content is based on what people send us. So if you want me to cover anything in another video, just let me know as well. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon.